Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to Small World and thank you for joining me with today's video. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make realistic miniature magazines and newspapers that would go great with dioramas, action figure displays, dollhouses, and much more. Let's get started. Here's a PDF of some magazines and newspapers that I wanted to make. And I just found the images on the internet and scaled them to about the right size for the scale that I'm working in. I also copied the images twice and put them side by side so I can fold them in half. I won't be seeing the back side in my final product so I'm not worried about the front and back being the same image. Here's the printed newspapers. I just printed these at my local FedEx using the self-serve printers. Now, I'm using a sharp X-Acto blade and a metal ruler to cut out each newspaper. I take my time and make sure that my ruler is lined up properly before making the cuts. Here's one of the newspapers cut out from the printed sheet. I just continue to cut out different images of newspapers on the sheet using the same process. For this display, I'm going to make several stacks of newspapers on a shelf, so I start folding them in half making sure the ends line up properly. Then I take some matte Mod Podge on a T-pin and I apply it inside the folded newspaper. Then I press the halves together and then repeat the process for all of the newspapers. Once I have my folded newspapers, I take some super glue and apply it to the top of one newspaper. Then, I stack a newspaper on top of the glue. I press down firmly to make sure that there is no gaps between the two newspapers. I continue to repeat this process for all of the newspapers within the same design to create my stack. I remember the first time I did this, I was so surprised how a bunch of folded pieces of paper stacked on top of each other looked so realistic. Here's the completed stack. As you can see, there's a nice height buildup at this point. I repeat the same process with other kinds of newspapers. You can add some nice variations simply by changing how many newspapers to a stack, or by making some piles neater while making some messier like this one. I think subtle details like these are a super easy way to build realism within your dioramas. Now I'm moving on to the magazines and the process is basically the same. I start by cutting out the strips of magazines from the printed sheet. Unfortunately, I couldn't fill the sheet full of magazine prints because the file size would have been too large for the printers at FedEx. So, I had to limit each page to a smaller number of magazines as you can see here. Once the strips are cut out, I cut out each individual magazine, making sure each has a front and a back. Again, the image is the same for the front and back, but I'll only be seeing one side in the final product. Here are all the magazines cut out. I make sure to make duplicates of the same magazine so I can build some depth on the shelves. Then I take each magazine and fold them in half just like the newspapers from earlier. I have a lot more magazines than newspapers so this will take quite some time. Also the magazines are smaller and therefore a little harder to work with but again the process is pretty simple and straightforward. With all the magazines folded, I glue them together using matte Mod Podge just like the newspapers. I know these magazines don't have any pages in them, but at this scale, the thickness of the folded paper is more than sufficient to represent the thickness of a magazine. Slowly but surely, I glued all the magazines together and they're ready to be applied to the shelves. For the shelves, I designed and modeled them in Fusion 360 and 3D printed them on my Elegoo Saturn S. If you'd like to download and print these shelves for yourselves, they're available on my Patreon for gold and platinum members. I'll link my Patreon in the description below. Here's how the newspaper shelf looks all printed, and now comes the time-consuming process of removing the supports. To do this, I slowly cut the supports away from the print using an X-Acto knife, and I make sure to take my time. This is one of those things that you really don't want to rush, because you might end up hurting the print or yourself if you're not careful. I've had lots of comments recommending that I soak the print in hot water and simply peel the supports away. I think it's a great and simple method to remove supports from typical 3D prints. The reason why I don't use this method is because my prints are usually super fragile. Most of my prints have parts that have a thickness between 0.03 inches thick to 0.01 inches thick, so tearing the supports away without cutting them would most likely tear or distort the print. Any leftover support artifacts or layer lines or any other irregularities are sanded away using some sanding sticks. 
be sure to wear a dust mask when doing this and make sure you can easily clean up the dust as resin dust is something that you don't want to be breathing in. Again, I take my time during this step and I make sure only to apply light pressure and let the sandpaper do most of the work. Most imperfections can be sanded all the way out, but I had a small dent that I couldn't get rid of here, so I filled it with some super glue and sanded it back once it completely dried. You could also use something like Tamiya putty if you'd prefer that. Here's the sanded shelf. I didn't film all of it, but I made sure to sand the entire print going up to 600 grit sandpaper. I used some styrene strips to add some cross braces to the shelf. This is a small detail that I noticed in my reference images, and I figured it would be easier to add this detail with styrene rather than having it printed and then having to remove the supports from it. These strips are just fixed in place using some super glue, and I made sure to add them to both sides of the shelf. With the styrene glued in place, I removed the back perforated panel from its supports and I don't glue it to the shelf yet because I want to assemble it after painting. Again, this piece is only 0.015 inches thick, so I use a knife to remove the supports. Here's the frame for the larger magazine shelf. Since they were super thin, I printed the side pieces separately. To install these side pieces, I put a 1-2-3 block on top of the large shelf frame near the edge that I'm gluing the side pieces to. Then, I glue the side pieces in place with super glue and press it against the 1 2 3 block to make sure everything is square. I repeat this for the other side as well. Here's one of the shelf supports that I printed. I printed 8 of these in total, 4 for each side of the shelves. This shelf also has a perforated back panel and again, I remove it from the supports using an X-Acto knife. In my references, there is one flat shelf at the bottom about 6 inches from the base, so I used the quarter inch piece of wood to space my styrene shelf to the proper height above the base. Just like the newspaper shelf, I added some more styrene strip supports to the shelf on both sides. And now comes the hardest part in my opinion, making the rest of the shelves. What makes this so difficult is the fact that each shelf has two rows and they are clear shelves, so basically double decker clear shelves. To make the shelves, I'm using clear plastic that you find from most products that come in clear boxes. It's pretty thin and flexible, but it can still hold its shape well. I printed out a template that has lines which indicate where I need to score my clear plastic piece. Because this shelf has two rows and has a guard out in front of it, there are a lot of folds that I need to make. To make the folds, I score a line into the plastic using the template I made. Then, I heat up the piece quickly with a hairdryer and fold the plastic along the scored line. Don't worry if the fold isn't a perfect 90 degrees. We'll fix that later after doing all the folds. I just continue to score, heat, and fold the plastic for the rest of the shelf. There are four folds in total. These shelves will sit on top of the small shelf supports that glue into place on the large magazine shelf frame. You may be wondering why I didn't 3D print these shelves in clear resin, as that would have definitely been easier. Clear 3D print resin has definitely improved over the past few years. However, even after sanding and clear coating, the finish simply wouldn't be as nice as using plastic from clear packaging. This stuff is super shiny and looks just like clear acrylic shelving. Here's the finished folded shelf. I know it's a weird shape, but it'll make much more sense once it's glued in place. Here's the top shelf. It doesn't have two rows, so it's a bit smaller than the other ones. In all, I made four clear shelves total. Even though it's tedious, I think the results are great and well worth the effort. Next, I'm applying the shelf supports to a scrap piece of foam with tape on it, which makes it much easier to handle when painting. I do the same for a few more parts before moving to the paint booth. I paint the shelves in a very dark gray. I mix these colors from Tamiya German gray and black. Painting is super simple and straightforward. I'm going for full coverage, but I'm making sure not to flood the surface with too much paint in order to prevent the paint from clogging fine details, such as the perforated panels. It's probably not a bad idea to prime these before painting. However, I was fresh out of primer, and the well-sanded surface of the shelves should be good enough for the paint to stick well. 
If you don't have an airbrush, you could definitely use spray paint or some nice quality acrylic brush paints. I'd recommend Tamiya spray cans if you go with the spray paint route because the spray paint is super fine. Just make sure to keep the can a safe distance from your print and do multiple light coats waiting for the paint to dry between coats to build up full coverage. I noticed that the shelf supports in my reference images were a dull silver color, so I'm painting them with Tamiya Flat Aluminum, which looks perfect. Once the paint dries, I add the perforated panels to the backs of the shelves using some super glue. These panels have such a nice texture and I think they add lots of detail and realism to the shelves. Next, I apply some super glue into the notches that I modeled into the magazine shelves, and then I stick the silver shelf supports in place. They fit perfectly into the notches, and I just glue each support in one by one. With all the shelf supports in place, it's time to add the clear shelving. To do this, I apply Super Gold Plus Super Glue to the shelf supports where the shelves will sit. If you want to use super glue like me, it's very important to use the exact super glue that I'm using. It's designed to work on clear parts unlike ordinary super glue which typically hazes clear parts. Before gluing the shelves in place, I made sure to test fit them against the shelf supports to see if everything lined up properly and to make sure there are no big gaps or fitment issues. You have to be very precise when gluing the shelves in place because you don't want to smear the glue around and make a mess on your clear shelves. Here's how the shelves look glued in place and I was super happy with the way it looked at this point. Making clear shelves was super intimidating to me, but I think they turned out great. I had some Mod Podge to the shelf where I want my magazines to sit. I simply just dot some glue in place and then place a magazine on top. Again, make sure not to apply too much glue so it doesn't ooze out of the sides and make a mess. I just continue this process starting with the back row of all the shelves first. I leave some spaces here and there to add some variation to the shelf. Then I go back and start adding magazines to the front row of all of the shelves using the same process. To add some variation in depth, I apply some glue to the front of some magazines and then place more magazines in front to simulate multiple copies of each magazine. Again, I think small details like this really help add realism to a scene. I add a couple stacks of magazines to the bottom two flat shelves as this was shown in my reference images. Here's the completed magazine shelf and this is now one of my favorite small details that I've made. Going back to the stacks of newspapers we made earlier, I glued them to the smaller shelf using the same methods as the magazine shelf. Again, I leave a couple shelves empty to add some realism and variety. Each shelf has tag holders with labels in them, so I 3D printed and painted them using the same dark gray as earlier. I brush on some Mod Podge and then apply the label to each tag holder. I also slide in an advertisement that will sit on top of the shelf. I glue the labels in place on each shelf using some super glue. Then I glue the advertisement on top. And here's the completed newspaper shelf. These magazines and newspapers were super fun and easy to make. And I have to say that I think this is my favorite little project that I've completed so far. I actually made a magazine shelf last year, but I got the details wrong and the size was too small. Also, the shelf was warped, but I decided to still use it for some reason, so now I'm super glad that I rebuilt it with all the right details like the clear shelves and the perforated backing. I think this new one looks so much better. Also, I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters for helping me keep this channel going. I've gotten lots of new members this past week, so thank you for supporting me and I'm so happy that you joined. If you like what I do and want to support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You'll get to see a work in progress updates of all the projects that I'm working on before any other platform. Also, you can download and print my PDFs and 3D files from this video, as well as all of my previous projects to use in your own dioramas. I'll leave a link to my Patreon in the description below if you're interested.
Well, thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you next time.